In recent years, the relationship between the U.S. and China has remained tense. The U.S. has increased its vigilance due to accusations of Chinese students and scholars stealing intelligence or having ties to the Chinese Communist Party. As a result, Chinese individuals traveling to the U.S. have become a primary focus for U.S. customs. In June of this year, four Chinese students were sent back to China after being questioned at customs. This news has made many Chinese students applying to study in the U.S. feel nervous. The U.S. is no longer a place that Chinese people can easily visit, especially those suspected of having secret missions. According to the China Daily, the four Chinese scholars who were traveling to the U.S. for studies and academic conferences all had backgrounds in science and technology, with two focusing on artificial intelligence. U.S. Customs and Border Protection (CBP) officers took them to an interrogation room and questioned them for over 10 hours about their personal and family backgrounds, studies, and internships in the U.S., and whether they were Communist Party members or cooperating with the Chinese government. Three of them had their visas revoked on the spot. And were sent back to China. Bloomberg reported that in the first five months of this year, over 20 Chinese students were subjected to long interrogations when entering the U.S. Their phones, computers, and other electronic devices were checked, and some had their visas revoked or were told they couldn't enter the U.S. for five years. These students were from top U.S. universities, including Yale, Johns Hopkins, and the University of Virginia. For instance, on the last day of 2023, Susan, a second-year PhD student in biomedical imaging at the University of Virginia, was questioned by U.S. Customs at Washington Dulles Airport. She was asked if she was a Communist Party member, if she had received scholarships from the Chinese government, and who had sent her to the U.S. Despite her denials, she was deported after an eight-hour interrogation and a 12-hour search. Her F-1 student visa was canceled, and she was banned from entering the U.S. for five years. Before Susan was deported, Fei Meng, a PhD student at Yale, also faced long interrogations at the airport. U.S. Customs officials informed Meng that, under Presidential Proclamation 10043, she was being deported and banned from entering the U.S. for five years. Meng, a graduate of a top Chinese university, had conducted research at the National Cancer Center of the National Institutes of Health in 2022. On November 27, 2023, she obtained a renewed one-year F-1 student visa and flew from. Beijing to Washington, only to endure a 50-hour ordeal and return to Beijing. Back home, Meng sat on her couch in disbelief, wondering why she had returned. She lost the opportunity to defend her PhD dissertation, which ended her pursuit of the degree. Meng discovered that 11 other Chinese students had faced similar situations. Some Chinese students are now too afraid to return to China, fearing they will be investigated upon re-entry to the U.S. According to a report by Voice of America on June 23, Xiao Jinchen, a PhD student researching semiconductor materials at a university in Washington, has not returned to her hometown of Beijing for six years. She fears that if she goes back to China, she will face difficulties re-entering the U.S. Despite the Chinese authorities expressing anger over the deportation of Chinese students by U.S. Customs and accusing the border enforcement of unjustified interrogation, harassment, and visa cancellation, the deported Chinese students have remained relatively low key after returning home. Their information is hard to find online, and the Chinese government avoids disclosing the reasons for their deportation. Bill Drexel, a researcher at the Center for a New American Securities Technology and National Security Program, Voice of America, that the U.S. government has indeed discovered cases where some students attempted to steal strategic technologies for the Chinese Communist Party. Therefore, revealing the identities of the deported students is not in the interest of Chinese authorities. Matthew Brazil, a researcher at the Jamestown Foundation and co-author of Chinese Communist Espionage: An Intelligence Primer, told Voice of America, "It's well known that Beijing's intelligence agencies pay particular attention to Chinese students and scientists working or studying abroad in fields involving dual-use technologies regulated by export control laws. They force Chinese students and scientists to report what they have learned when they return home for holidays. This has been going on for decades." Since 2000, as China's economy has developed rapidly, a large number of Chinese students have flocked to Western countries, competing for places in prestigious universities and high-tech fields. China has become the largest source of international students in many developed countries, including the U.S. The number of Chinese students in the U.S. increased from 60,000 in the year 2000 to 380,000 in 2020. 
In the early days of China's reform and opening up, Western countries had a somewhat naive consensus. Leaders believed that China's backwardness was due to poverty, and that helping China develop economically and technologically would improve the living standards of its people, creating a majority middle class and leading the society towards democracy. However, to the disappointment of the West, as China's economy has risen, the Chinese authorities have become more authoritarian and ambitious. They have used the large number of students studying abroad to export their influence to the West, infiltrating various sectors of Western society and attempting to control the world. In 2018, Clive Hamilton, a philosophy professor at the Center for Public Ethics at Charles Sturt University in Australia, published an investigative book titled *Silent Invasion*. After conducting numerous interviews and extensive research, the book details how, in less than 15 years, various sectors of Australian society have been thoroughly infiltrated by the Chinese Communist Party. Hamilton's investigation acted like a depth charge, exposing deep-seated anxieties within Australian society and raising awareness in Western countries. Consequently, the Chinese authorities harbor intense resentment towards Professor Hamilton. Silent Invasion lists over a thousand Chinese operatives, informants, and spies, revealing real events of comprehensive infiltration in Australia, from politics to media, from universities to primary schools, and from real estate to agriculture. Australian democracy appears naive and fragile under the sharp power of the Chinese Communist Party. Hamilton likens this struggle to Boy Scouts taking on Don Corleone. In the book, Hamilton directly names numerous Australian university technology research projects that have inadvertently fueled the Chinese government's military ambitions. For example, the Australian Research Council provided a three-year, four hundred thousand Australian dollar research grant to the University of Adelaide to collaborate with the Beijing Institute of Aeronautical Materials, which is part of the Aviation Industry Corporation of China (AVIC). AVIC is the main supplier of military aircraft to the People's Liberation Army (PLA), including the J-20 stealth fighter, the fifth-generation J-31 stealth fighter, and unmanned attack aircraft. Additionally, the University of Technology Sydney has partnered with the China Electronics Technology Group Corporation (CETC) to research big data, covering areas such as mobile sensing. Computer vision, cloud computing, and data storage. This research aims to enhance defense intelligence analysis and develop public security early warning systems. Hamilton wrote that CETC's technology helps the Chinese Communist Party create the world's most comprehensive and oppressive surveillance system targeting its citizens. The open and collaborative culture of the Australian scientific community, which is highly commendable, is being exploited. International students are a crucial economic source for Australian universities, with Chinese students making up 21% of the total international student population in Australia, approximately 170,000 individuals. These students excel in various cutting-edge scientific fields. Mike Burgess, then Director General of the Australian Security Intelligence Organisation, stated at a hearing that foreign governments are using covert and deceptive methods to acquire Australian research achievements. He said foreign intelligence services and their proxies are all too willing to take advantage of the openness that is integral to our universities and research institutions to steal intellectual property and cutting-edge technologies. To counter the pervasive infiltration by the Chinese Communist Party, Australia has taken a leading role globally by enacting the Foreign Interference Law, which significantly increases penalties for espionage activities. Public opinion widely views this law as primarily targeting the CCP. The first case following the law's enactment involved the Australian government revoking the permanent residency visa of Chinese Australian businessman Xiang Mo Huang and banning him from entering the country. Huang, a prominent figure in Australia's pro-CCP circles, had invested in establishing the Australia-China Relations Institute at the University of Technology Sydney and served as its inaugural chairman. He was also the president of the Australian Council for the Promotion of Peaceful National Reunification. Around the same time, the U.S. and China were engaged in fierce competition in the tech sector. Washington repeatedly criticized China for using its civil-military integration strategy to steal sensitive U.S. technology and economic intelligence, accusing Chinese nationals of espionage under the guise of study and research, thereby threatening U.S. national security. To protect technological secrets from being stolen, the U.S. began tightening its scrutiny of Chinese researchers entering the country. In May 2020, then President Donald Trump signed Proclamation 10043, which barred Chinese students and scholars with ties to the Chinese military from entering the U.S. on student and scholar visas. Under this executive order, U.S. Customs and Border Protection has the authority to deny entry to Chinese students and scholars. 
The executive order, effective in June 2020, led to the cancellation of thousands of visas for graduate students and researchers with backgrounds in Chinese military institutions. One notable example occurred in July 2020 when U.S. authorities detained four Chinese scholars accused of concealing their PLA affiliations to obtain visas. One of them, Tang Zhen, was a researcher who had hidden in the Chinese consulate in San Francisco. Tang Zhen had applied for the U.S. J-1 Visiting Scholar Visa in October 2019 and entered the U.S. on December 27. According to the U.S. indictment, she failed to disclose her military status on her visa application but was, in fact, a member of the Chinese Air Force. In December 2020, the Trump administration further issued new regulations restricting travel to the U.S. for Chinese Communist Party members and their immediate families. The U.S. stated that these measures were part of ongoing policies, regulations, and enforcement actions to counter the malign influence of the Chinese Communist Party. The Biden administration has largely retained the Trump-era policies toward China, including this executive order targeting Chinese scholars and students, which remains in effect. In May 2021, a Chinese student planning to study in the U.S. was denied a visa because his father was a police officer in the CCP. The U.S. Embassy confirmed at the time that the U.S. had stopped issuing visas to spouses and children of active personnel from the Chinese Immigration Bureau, Ministry of State Security, and Ministry of Public Security. In August 2021, three Chinese students were deported at Houston Airport after U.S. Customs found military training photos on their phones, which were deemed evidence of their potential military ties. In August 2023, several more Chinese students were deported. One student was deported for having social media chat messages supporting Russia's invasion of Ukraine, and another for hiding work experience on their visa application. According to the U.S. State Department, this presidential proclamation resulted in the denial of 1,964 visas to Chinese scholars in 2021 and 1,764 in 2022. A survey of visa denials indicated that most students denied visas had attended one of eight universities in China. Beihang University, Beijing University of Technology, Harbin Institute of Technology, Harbin Engineering University, Northwestern Polytechnical University, Nanjing University of Aeronautics and Astronautics, Nanjing University of Science and Technology, and Beijing University of Posts and Telecommunication. The Australian Strategic Policy Institute speculates that the CCP is trying to weaken Western scrutiny of Chinese students, noting that 95 civilian universities in China have ties to the Chinese defense sector. Following the U.S.'s tightening of restrictions on Chinese students in sensitive technology fields, the U.K. government also took action. A 2020 report by The Times mentioned that the U.K. National Security Council ministers had preliminarily signed off on stricter rules aiming at preventing hundreds of Chinese students from entering the U.K. Students already holding visas deemed security risks could have their visas revoked. The latest measures reflect the UK's growing concerns over Chinese students acquiring technology and knowledge. The restricted subjects reportedly include aerospace, artificial intelligence, cybersecurity, and other defense-related sciences. Executive Director of the Asia-Pacific Peace Foundation think tank at Taiwan's National Security Bureau, Dong Li Wen, stated in an interview with Voice of America, The Chinese Communist Party itself is an espionage organization. Dong, who is currently a professor at the Department of Public Safety at Taiwan Central Police University, has long been engaged in research on mainland Chinese politics, cross-strait relations, international politics, and national security. He explained that the CCP's charter stipulates that all party members have a duty to report everything they see and hear to the party. Under decades of CCP rule, the populace has been brainwashed to listen to the party, be loyal to the party, and obey the party's leadership. To better serve the party, the CCP selects a group of outstanding students who are absolutely loyal to the party from some of the top schools and develops them into party members. When these CCP members go abroad and integrate into various countries, they act like red seeds, embedding themselves in every necessary field. Every so-called Chinese scholar is a crucial tool for intelligence gathering. They fulfill the party's requirements, carry out their duties as party members, and complete the tasks assigned to them by the party. After the Cold War ended in 1991, the world underwent significant changes summarized by three words, globalization, digitization, and technological advancement. Globalization refers to the large-scale cross-border flow of people, capital, technology, goods, and information. China has taken advantage of this by mixing espionage activities into these five elements, spreading its spy network worldwide. 
China's espionage activities are comprehensive, with every government department and agency conducting espionage and infiltration according to their responsibilities. For example, the Chinese Ministry of Education engages in intelligence gathering while conducting educational cooperation or cultural exchanges overseas. The Confucius Institutes and the Thousand Talents programs are prime examples. Professor Dong Li Wen also pointed out that before 2018, the primary target of the U.S. intelligence community was counterterrorism, leading to most resources being dedicated to the war on terror. This resulted in the rise of Chinese espionage. It was not until 2018, when then President Donald Trump began to recognize the threat, that the U.S. intelligence community started prioritizing countering China and Russia. Nowadays, the United States' concern about the threat posed by China is continuously increasing. China is aiming to weaken the various advantages of the United States by stealing American military and civilian technology and intellectual property, with the ultimate goal of challenging the international order established by the United States. U.S. customs scrutiny of Chinese students may only block a small number of spies, but it has already sent a serious warning to those CCP spies entering the United States with missions.